Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. Ryan, check out this lilac. Have you ever seen anything so sweet? Yes, Judy, I have. It's a new episode <laughs> of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at the Hulda Klager Lilac Gardens, where today is the first day of Lilac Days. And it's great because they are open every day through Mother's Day. And later in the show, I'll be talking with Dwight about the Lilac Days and what you can expect when you get here. Also coming up in the show, we'll be talking about strawberries. But coming up first, some favorite native plants. I am at a, just a perfect place today. I'm at Basquiat with Lori, and Lori, I love coming here because your main focus is natives, and you almost feel like you're in the woods of Oregon. You're not at a nursery. It's wonderful. Thank you. And so, you know, I think we need to talk about some basic native plants that anybody can grow if you have a big garden, a big piece of property, or even a small one. Well, some of my favorites are the red currant which grows in sun or shade. It's well behaved, so it fits even in a small garden. And it's a hummingbird magnet. Bees and butterflies love it too. It blooms in the spring and it just has this beautiful deep magenta color. The color can vary a little bit from white to pale pink to deep pink. Wow. But that is one of my favorite shrubs. It is nice and really you can kind of contain the growth. You don't have to let it get as big as it's going to get. You can keep it a little smaller. True. And in a perfect world in your garden, you would plant one in the sun and one in the shade so you could stagger the bloom period for the wildlife. Oh, that is cool. And then what about for like lower growing plants? I see you have a collection here. Well, this is a collection of primarily uh, shade loving plants. And these are lilies. This is Trillium ovatum. It starts out white and as it blooms and fades, it turns a deep magenta pink before it dies back. I think it is the most beloved wildflower in Oregon. Um, my mom says the only time she ever got in trouble with her mom was for picking a bouquet oh. of trilliums when oh. she was a little girl. And what you've done when you do that is you've depleted the bulb of its nutrients for the following season, but you have not killed the trillium, as some books would lead you to believe. They're right. just trying to protect trilliums. Right. But they're very easy to grow. They're really drought tolerant. They're great in a woodland setting, and they don't require any sort of care on the homeowner's part once established. Nice. And I know you have a really big one, and that's a special kind of trillium. What's the name of that one? That trillium is called Kurobayashi, and it's a true native to Oregon um, bulb, but it was discovered by a Japanese gentleman, so it has a Japanese name, which is a little bit misleading as to whether it would be native or not, but it really is. And it's fun to grow in your garden. It's easy to grow in your garden as well. And we grow those here from seed. So it takes me nine years to grow wow. a bulb that is blooming from a seed. Wow. So it's an easy crop, but it is a slow crop to a grow. A long one, but just so beautiful. So beautiful. And then what are the little yellow ones that are right by your foot there? This is called the fawn lily or Erythronium oregonum. It's also sometimes referred to as the trout lily. It gets that name because the foliage on it resembles a fawn's back or a trout's back. Um, so this is Erythronium oregonum. And then this that is pink is Erythronium revolutum. So we have the revolutum in small quantities, not really a lot of them, but every year I have you know, a generous handful of them available too. Nice. And they're also both incredibly easy to grow. They put on a big spring show every year. They look really cute, planted in with your trillium and they require zero care. Nice, nice. And I know that it's wonderful to come out here and to shop, but really it's more than just a shopping experience. It's really kind of like a, a, a sanctuary here. Yeah, I wanted it to be a sanctuary for both uh, wildlife and people, some place where you could just come to to feel better. 
and I've created over the years a lot of different demonstration gardens to inspire people and help them to become familiar with what they like or even what they don't like. Right, sure. But if I can show them a dug fir in its mature shape instead of in a little one gallon pot, which is somewhat um, deceiving, <laughs> uh, they just go, oh yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so really you have to come out to Bosque Dell and really leave enough time that you can get your plants, but you can also come and get inspired. Bring your camera because Lori loves that you take pictures and maybe recreate some of these little vignettes at your garden. Thanks so much, Lori. You're welcome. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Garden time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels, and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty, so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. It is time for the lilacs to bloom at the Hull de Klager Lilac Garden. I am with Dwight, and Dwight, it is so nice to be here this year because we could not come last year to come and see all these beautiful flowers. Yeah, it's been we've been shut down, and we're excited about being open again. Yeah, and it's so nice because it's right at the beginning, so you get to see the lilacs, but there's so many more that are in bud, so you know it's going to be a lovely season of bloom. Yeah, it's uh, it's coming on. They're coming on. The earlies are starting to show a lot of color and uh, we're uh, just excited about the colors that are coming out. So Dwight, when we come, what can we see when we're, when we're here? Well, you know, of course the beautiful lilacs and things. This year it's going to be a little different because unfortunately due to the closeness of the proxim or the, the, uh, the visitors, the house and the gift shop are not going to be open. We, uh, we will have a um, slideshow of the house in the uh, potting shed so people can stop and see what the interior of the house looks like. Um, we will be open for plant sales though and that's exciting because uh, everybody needs a lilac in their garden. It is nice and really to take home a souvenir from the garden is really what gardeners love to do. Absolutely, yep, you bring your car and we'll stuff it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so if we're going to be buying those plants so maybe you can give us some tips to have success at home. Oh, okay, well when you get your lilac home, lilacs like to lay, to, to, to be planted in an area with full sunshine. They like well-drained soil they like sweet soil, so a little lime in the fall, some fertilizer in the spring, and uh, if you're going to prune them, which ultimately you'll probably need to do, you want to do it shortly after they bloom. Uh, and why, why is that? You know, they begin to set their buds for the next year uh, right yeah. after the current blossom com completes itself, I guess you'd say, and so you want to cut them so that then they will put new buds out where you cut for next year. Ah, that is good. So, but I have a really small garden and I cannot have shrubs this big. So do you have anything that I could maybe have for a smaller garden? You know, I'm glad you asked that because <laughs> we do happen to have some. 
as a matter of fact, we've got two or three varieties in our sale area that uh, don't grow more than six or seven feet tall. And a normal lilac's like 15 feet tall, sure. so it's hard to fit in a small yard. But we've got some size uh, plants that can fit in just about any size yard. So Dwight, it's so great that you're open today for bloom time. And so I know you're in Woodland, Washington, so right off I-5. Yes, that's right, exit 21. You'll go through downtown and you'll see signs directing you to the gardens. Uh, if you need more information, please go to our website, which is www.lilacgardens.com. Well, you know, there are lilacs, I think, for everyone, for every kind of size of garden. And when you come out to the garden here, you can really see so many different ones, so many different colors. And it's a long bloom season because there's some that bloom early, middle, and late season. So really, to come out here with your family and friends, bring your camera, and just enjoy strolling through the garden this year. Dwight, thank you so much for inviting us. It's lovely. Oh, help. I'm glad to, glad to have you. Come and see us. Well, we're talking trees today. I'm out at Blooming Junction with Ron. Now, Ron, this winter was pretty rough for a lot of people with their trees, with the winds and the ice storms. And you guys have a nice selection. And you have some trees that are kind of some of your favorites, right? I do. Um, I think today we're going to talk about some flowering trees, um, some trees for fall interest. People usually don't think about that until fall. Um, some evergreens and maybe some unusual ones that people wouldn't uh, normally think of. Right, because now is a great time to get those, get those trees in oh, the ground. Definitely. You know, we've surveyed our, our yard, we've kind of cleaned them up, and now we're looking to replant a, a couple. So you're talking, you know, the flowering trees. So what, what were some of your, your favorites that you like? Well, um, obviously right here we have a flowering cherry. Uh, this is a, a, a beautiful statement tree. Um, if you got a place that you'd like something small uh, in the yard, this will stay small. It'll get a little bit higher, um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful tree. Uh, along the same lines, we have a uh, weeping flowering crab apple, which is a lot like this. Um, behind us here in bloom, we have the flowering pears. Um, you know, they're a, a medium sized tree. Um, but one of the larger flowering trees. And that's um, usually nice because they stay, stay a little bit narrower too, right? They do. They're more, they take on a more columnar shape than right. a, a broad shape. Um, and then we have, you know, flowering crab apples here um, that uh, I love the flowering crab apples. It's a very nice sized tree for somebody that doesn't have a lot of space. Right. Um, but it's a beautiful tree. And it's a little later blooming than some of the flowering pears yes. and some yes. flowering cherries. You know, and then, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're saying, you know, we always kind of think of the fall color, but we usually don't wait till fall until we think of it. But That's now is right. kind of that time to get, get the tree now. That's right. And then right. you had a couple favorite fall color. Uh, I do. Um, one of my favorite uh, trees is the Raywood Ash. Um, I like this tree in general because it has a very fine leaf, a very, uh, it provides a dappled shade, so it's great for lawns and stuff like that, so you don't block out of the sun completely. And then in the fall, it takes on a burgundy uh, color. Yeah, it's a real um, so deep, it's beautiful, rich color. Yeah, beautiful fall color. Um, the uh, Acer rubrums, the uh, maples, um, beautiful fall color. Um, we have red sunsets. Um, you really can't beat the, uh, the fall color right. with that. And those are nice trees because they do grow a little bit bigger. So those people that want to kind of screen out an area or provide a larger exactly, yeah, that's shade. what I consider a larger tree. Um, the raywood ash a little bit smaller, but um, definitely the uh, Ace of rooms get a good size. So right. if you're looking for a substantial tree, that's a good one. And Ron, there was another fall favorite tree that you really enjoyed. Yeah, the, uh, the Nyssa sylvatica, that's a beautiful uh, fall colored tree. Just an incredible, um, just a fiery red and orange. Yeah, we've seen that one up at Hoyt Arboretum and just the structure of the tree is great. And that's yeah. that fire engine color. Yeah, the just it's incredible. And then there's, you know, people that might not necessarily have a lot of space to put in a big tree like that, but you have some trees that are good for those you know, small garden spaces or even some container runs, right? Yeah, um, I have some standards. Um, um, and a standard is basically more of a shrub grown into a tree form. 
Um, we have um, a couple of the Fives of Carpus um, I haven't carried before, which are really unusual. Um, I've got um, things like Styrax. Um, they make great statement trees, but they maintain a rather smaller size right. compared to other trees. You know, and then there's, you know, the, you know, you get the fall color and you get the flowering and the canopies, but there's also, you know, some good trees that you can do that are evergreen that are going to keep their leaf on all winter. Yeah, um, you know, for a while it was difficult for me to bring in some uh, Magnolia grandifloras for some reason, uh, the evergreen Magnolia. Um, but I got a good selection of those now, and it's one of my favorite trees. They do really well here in Oregon. Big, huge, um, lemon-scented um, blossoms. It's just a wonderful evergreen tree. Um, and then something a little bit different, um, more of a screening type tree, uh, would be like a Leyland Cypress. Um, if you happen to have lost a tree that maybe blocked out some unsightly parts of your yard, that would be a, a, a quick fix. They're fast growing. Right. You know, so there's, you know, there's kind of a tree for, for any, any area or any situation. If, you know, you're looking for, you know, sun ones or shade ones, big ones, small ones. Absolutely. You know, and you guys have a, a great selection out here, here right now. And it's definitely the time that's time We to do, out. and they've been going. Um, it's amazing. People are buying early this year. So I would suggest that people <laughs> can get out now and look. Right. You know, don't, don't wait too long. Don't now, wait. Now's right. where you got the selection and the variety, you know, so... You know, you can come out to, you know, Blooming Junction and talk to Ron and his staff, you know, and they have an answer for, you know, any, any situation where you need, need to get a tree. So, you know, make sure you go visit their website or you go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you open. So, Ron, appreciate all the information and we're looking forward to getting out and planting a tree in our yard. Great. Thanks, Ron. Spring is all about freshness, and you can't get any fresher than Blooming Junction. From new and interesting annuals and perennials that can bring fresh color to your garden, to the freshest of produce from our fields and from local growers. We can also help you be successful with our full slate of timely and helpful classes. Freshen up your home and garden, inside and out, with a visit to Blooming Junction. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens and great tasting food for your table. You work hard in the garden. Shouldn't your gloves do the same? Garden Like a Girl makes gloves and apparel from natural, recycled, and organic materials. Garden Like a Girl gloves will help you tackle any job. They are designed to fit, protect your hands and nails, and they last. Plus, 10% of our profits go to cancer research. To learn more about Garden Like a Girl products, go to our website, gardenlikeagirl.com. Garden Like a Girl, ruggedly feminine. For over 100 years, Collier Arborcare and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. I think a favorite fruit of everyone is strawberries. And do we have some great information for you? I'm with Mark Biggie at Al's Garden and Home. And so Mark, you gotta tell us all about strawberries because we all have to have a strawberry patch this year. Yeah, I love strawberries and I especially love to be able to go out. It's one of those things you can go out, you can pick right off the plant and eat. And kids love them too. That is, so it's, it's for way. everybody. Yeah. So tell us about a couple different plants because there are different ones. Right, there are a couple different types of strawberries and you should really consider what you want to use the strawberry for when you're buying them. Um, one kind is what we call June bearing. Um, a hood is a great example of a June bearing uh, strawberry, but what it will do is it will bloom all at once. And so all the root, all the fruit will ripen uh, real closely together. And so that's great if you're going to make jams, if you're going to freeze them, any preserving that you want to do. It's great to have a June bearing so you get all your berries at once. Ah. The other kind is known as ever bearing and it's also called day neutral. Um, we have a couple of great varieties of those and those will bloom and produce fruit all season. Hmm. So they'll start at the very end of May, early June and you'll get a little bit of fruit and it'll just keep going. So if you love fresh eating fruit or you like to go out and just pick it off the plant and eat it, 
and Everbearing's a great choice for you. Ah, nice. And I see there's another one here and I had never heard of it before. Yeah, so this one is a brand new variety of Everbearing that we are growing this year. It's called Sweet Anne. So my dad found it at a roadside fruit stand. He <laughs> tasted the fruit and it was so sweet and so delicious. He said, we got to find it. So it took him about a year to find it, but now we're growing it. So this oh, is wow. a great Everbearing. Um, so it's a really good flavored berry. Nice. And so I see that there's also some fruit already um, on here that's developed. So can I let that develop? Is it okay? Yeah, they're just starting to bloom now. You'll start to get some fruit, you know, like I say, end of May or early June. And some people will say to take it off. I say the first year, go ahead and try <laughs> it. You're not going to get a ton of fruit off it, but you'll be able to taste it and you'll be able to see what it's going to be like. A hint of the, the treasures to come. Nice, yeah. nice. And so we, now we know all about the variety. So yeah. how do we plant them? So it's super easy. Um, so on these berries, we've grown them all in these cocoa fiber containers. Mm -hmm. So you can take these out and plant them right in the ground. And you can even see this Whoa. one. The roots are already growing mm -hmm. out of the berry pot. And so you can just plant this right in the ground, make sure the dirt covers the top of this little lip and you're good to go. Nice. And so you can plant them in a row. You want to plant them about 18 inches apart or you can plant them in little containers like this. That so is you, nice. Yeah. So really anybody, you don't have to have a patch. You could have it on the deck yeah. or I see a planter here. I've even yeah. seen them in hanging baskets. Yeah, they all work great. You know, they're going to they're going to trail some. Um, they would fill in a nice little planter like this. You can have it on your deck, put it in a nice sunny area. Okay. Um, if you're planting them in the ground, they're like a well-drained soil, but they'll just keep going and you'll have berries for years to come. Nice. And I see that there are a little bit of housekeeping. So I see that yes. there's a fertilizer and maybe use Sluggo. Yes, we use, um, we recommend uh, Berry Tone for the fertilizer. It's an all organic and it's made for berries. So it's perfect for your strawberries. Um, and then the, the, the one downside of uh, berries being, or the strawberries being so yummy is slugs like them too. Of course. And so you'll want to make sure to put out some slug bait. We recommend Monterey. It's great. Um, it's just iron based, so it's safe for pets and kids. And not that your kids are going to eat the slug bait, but your pets <laughs> sometimes do, but um, they can protect them nice and easily. So all such great information. So if you need more information, please go to Al's garden and home websites and you come out to any of their four stores or go to the garden time website and you can see the information there too mark thanks so much thank you judy well it's springtime our gardens are awakening and so are the birds i'm with amanda we're out at backyard bird shop and amanda you know people that are getting into birding what do they need to know or what do they need to have in their gardens yeah, thank you for asking. There are a lot of great ways to get started with birding if you're new to, to feeding the birds in your backyard. And there's kind of three main things that we always talk about. You can feed seed. And so you can put up a traditional seed feeder. We've got a variety here. We've got tube feeders. You can put up seed and that'll bring in a wide variety of birds. Suet is a great, easy way. I call it kind of the gateway into bird feeding. It's a great way to put out um, food and nutritious food for the birds to bring a wide variety of birds into your yard. And then water. It's so important year round to provide water, fresh water for your birds, and you get a wider variety of species visiting your yard with water. Um, for example, you can't bring in a cedar waxwing into your yard with seed, but if you have moving water, that'll do the trick. So, and then, you know, in that note, we want to kind of make sure that, you know, when you're putting this out, you want to make sure it's clean, right? It's so important to feed responsibly. If you're not going to feed responsibly, then don't do it. It's okay. The birds will survive without you. But if you're going to do it, it's so important to keep your feeders clean. And so um, on our website, we have a lot of information on how to clean feeders. And so you, we've got bottle brushes that you can use for your tube feeders using a 10% Clorox or 10% bleach solution to clean them and then let them completely dry. Rinse them thoroughly and let them completely dry before you re-add your seed. And that's so important to just keep the birds healthy so they're not spreading disease between each other. Gotcha. You know, and you mentioned the kind of the suet, and you know, a lot of us think of suet as like a wintertime kind of thing to feed, but it's actually not. I think this is the most <laughs> exciting time to feed suet because we've got baby bird season happening, right? right? And so the baby birds love suet. This is full of nutritional um, protein and fats that the baby birds need. And so the parents will be bringing them to the, to the nest to feed them suet in the nest. And then they'll be bringing them to the suet feeder and teaching them how to feed from it. One of my most exciting baby bird stories is watching a northern flicker come and feed 
their young from this suet and then learning, watching the young learn how to eat from the suet feeder. And it's hilarious to watch because they're as big as the parent birds, but they're very clumsy and awkward. And so that's how you know it's a juvenile. And so it's really fun to watch them try to get on the suet feeder and feed, but it's so fun. And it just really enriches the whole, the whole baby bird season. Right. You know, and a lot of people think that you need like a big yard in order to attract all these birds, but you don't really do. No, absolutely. You don't need a yard really at all. You can have a deck um, with hookery and hanging off the deck that you can hang the feeders from. That's what my parents do. They have rich wildlife coming into their yard just with their seed and suet um, hanging off their decks. You can also, we have a fun variety of window feeders that even okay. if you have a big yard, it's a great way to bring in. Um, here's, here's just a glass one that you can fill with sunflower seeds and put it right on your window and they'll come and eat from you. We've got um, hummingbird feeders too. So you don't have to have a big yard to really have a rich environment of birds. Right. And so you can sit inside and enjoy these. Absolutely. Things. That's the whole point. Never put a feeder where you can't see it because you're doing it for your person personal enjoyment as right. well as their health. Now what other kind of items might we need, you know, aside from the, the feeders and the food and the water? Well, as I said, this is nesting season. And so it's a great time to go ahead and put up a bird, a birdhouse, nesting boxes. That's um, just a really pretty one. And this one is also locally made. So we've got a wide variety of locally made birdhouses, nesting shelves. And I always like to put out nesting material. You don't have to do this. This is just a kind of an added bonus. But if you put out natural animal fibers, um, it's really fun to watch them come gather them up. We, um, just a few nights ago, we saw a chickadee with just beakfuls of the, the pygora goat fleece, just filling it up and flying off and then coming back and getting more. And it was entertainment for the whole dinner table. It was really lots right. of fun. And then, you know, once we get these birds to our yard, you know, we might not know what they are, but you have definitely have a way that you can help identify those. So my favorite way is these posters. This is kind of a good starter kit to learn how to identify the most common birds we find in our backyard. So this kind of has a wide variety of the most common birds found in our backyards. And then once you kind of narrow in and you're like, oh, it does have kind of a beak that looks like this, then you can kind of do a little bit more research and figure out the difference between a black-headed gross beak and an evening gross beak, and it kind of narrow in. My favorite thing to use when I'm traveling is the Merlin Bird ID app. It's free and I put it on my smartphone and wherever I am, I just plug in. You tell it kind of the size and the main colors and it gives you kind of a list of birds and it really helps you narrow in instead of having to carry around a big field guide. Right. Although field guides okay. are great. Well, you know, birding, birding is such a fun activity that you can do with the whole family. You know, if you're just getting into birding or you've been doing it for years, make sure you come down and talk to Amanda down here at Backyard Bird Shop and her and her staff will definitely get you started and be out in the garden with those birds. So thanks Amanda. It's Thank you so much. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. At Capital Subaru, we are family. It's not all about selling cars here. It's about our community and our families. We keep you moving. With the Subaru, it's always, what are you gonna do next? And with our new space, we'll get you service faster than ever before. And we are growing. With over 72,000 square feet and 30 new service space. Our new location is opening later this spring. I can't wait, it's a new year and it's gonna be awesome. At Capital Subaru, we are your way on the parkway. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Don't lose the battle with weeds. The Bonide line of weed beater products will help you get a handle on your weed problems. They are active in cool weather and you'll see visible results in less than 24 hours. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Olda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home too. 
Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Well, it's a beautiful spring day. We're with Jan, we're out in the garden. And Jan, there's definitely some things we need to be doing in our garden this time. There here. are. The other day I noticed that my rhubarb is bolting and uh, that's not unusual at all. And what happens in the spring is that uh, sometimes we'll have some warmer days and it tells the, the plant that to go to seed because the summer's over. Um, and so what I do is I just snap them off. The other thing is that um, some varieties are more apt to bolt than others. Like I've got two that are here that'll bolt and one that doesn't bolt at all. Right, so even um, though it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty looking flower, yeah. but we wouldn't want to remove that. Yeah, I hear some that I've already removed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, you could just remove it. If you don't remove it, that's not gonna hurt anything. It's not gonna kill the plant, but it's gonna reduce the vigor of the plant. Right, it's sending so all that energy out to it the keep it watered rhubarb. and enjoy the rhubarb. And then we've also talked in the past about soil temperatures and it's still, you know, even though it's, it's sunny and warm out, we still need to be watching our soil temperatures. Right, just because you don't need a jacket doesn't mean the soil is that warm. Uh, so just check your soil temperatures. As we talked about last time, the, the soil temperatures uh, for germination are on the packages of seed. Uh, so make sure you look at that. Right, because our nighttime temperatures are still, still absolutely, pretty, pretty cool. Absolutely, absolutely. And there check. are some cool season crops you can plant now. Right. You know, and as we're getting a lot of things in our garden, you know, slugs are always, always an issue. They but they're are. not necessarily coming in, you know, from our yards, but they can come in from other sources. Yeah, make sure that when you, even the best nursery that with the best sanitation, it just, it's really hard to keep slugs out of everything. And so when you bring something home, uh, just check the bottom of the pot, maybe even take the plant out and just check the bottom of the roots uh, and make sure you're not bringing any slugs in the house. Yeah, because they're tiny. They'll, they'll yeah. hide up in those little, little right, drainage holes. Right, right, they will. You know, now our, our, you know, azaleas and our rhodes are starting to bloom. I've noticed on some of mine at, at home that the leaves tend to have like a lot of little spotting. On last their, year's do. Yeah. Yeah, right now what I'm seeing on mine are last year's leaves are stippled and have all the chlorophyll sucked out of them from lace bug. Right. And there's a rhododendron lace bug and a azalea lace bug. Um, on my Facebook page I put a, 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 a publication from OSU that can give you all the differences and I'm sure you can get it off of the Garden Time site too. Right. But the new growth is coming up now and it's not bothered by them yet but watch it and see to make sure that you uh, take care of it if you need to, and there's cultural and chemical controls. Good for that. You know, and a lace bug is different than a lace wing. Yes, a lace wing, lace bug is a little tiny, tiny thing that you can see through on the underside of the leaf. A lace wing is a uh, neon green, real beautiful wings that you see more in warm summer nights, and they're a beneficial insect that right. their larvae eats aphids, and so uh, there's a lot of difference so between two the two. Two definitely different, different insects that we want. Absolutely. Uh, one we want, the other we don't. Right. <laughs> and so let's go down to the, uh, the greenhouse because we have a couple other tips I want to okay. check Okay, you can do it. So now we're back down in the greenhouse and you know people this time of year we're all getting our gardens ready. We've either seeded our own or we're buying starts in, right. the, in the greenhouses. And it looks like you know some of these come you know with multiple in a pack. Yep, they do. So should we plant them just like this, or is it better to pull them apart? Either way, if it's easy enough to pull them, tease them apart a little bit, and you still have roots on both of them, you can plant them both. Plant them. And what I've done out and back this year is I put a hoop over the top of the raised bed and uh, some row cover over it, and I threw some slug bait in there to get them Just before I before plant the plant lettuce. Them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Which is always a good idea. Yeah, for sure. And then sure. you have a little insulator handle yeah. there. Um, just just pipe wrap you can do on garden handles, just okay. rakes. Because right, sometimes when your you know your hands are kind of sore, yeah. a little arthritic is kind it's of hard to hold on to the handles. Makes it easier on you. Easier. And then the last thing we have here is the lemon. So I cut it back some more, and it's got tons of blossoms on it. So we'll just keep checking it. Right. So those are all, all going to be the be the fruit for later. Right. Those are the, those are the blossoms. So, right. Jan, you know it's a busy time of year to be in the garden, so it's great to have all of these tips. You know, some more information on the tips with Jan, you can go to the gardentime.tv website and we'll click you over to Jan's page or you can get more information there. So Jan, it's always a pleasure to be in the garden. See it's you next It's beautiful month. weather and we're looking forward to gardening. Yeah. So thank you. DRAM 
is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. Dram products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Dram for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Since 1987, French Prairie Gardens has brought you the best in farm fresh produce, beautiful plants, and memorable family events. Spring is here, and now is the time to get your garden ready with our wide selection of bedding plants and hanging baskets. Experience the best the country has to offer at French Prairie Gardens. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle, develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Here at Garden Time, we love to tell you all about how to plant trees and shrubs and perennials in your garden. But there's actually one thing you should do before you actually plant those, is you need to call 811, call before you dig. And so I'm with Eric today from Northwest Natural. And so Eric, why is it so important that we do call? Well, safety is the number one importance on calling. You want to make sure you do not damage or hit any utilities in your property. So as when you call 811, which is a national one, one number system, you allow the locators and utilities to come out and accurately locate any utility that's on your property, even outside your property, if that's what you're requesting. Uh, and really, it's also for safety of your neighborhood, too, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. So there's, there's gas lines below ground and also power lines below ground. Those are very hazardous. And so should I call like in a couple days before or can I call right before I'm going to do my project? So you want to call two business days before you start digging, not more than 10 business days before you start. And then should I tell you exactly where I'm going to be working? Does that help you guys? Yeah, so the, the more accurate you can be with the exact location of where you're digging is, is better. That allows the locators that come to your property and put locate marks down. It allows them to know exactly where you plan to do your digging. And you know, I have really sharp tools. So if you could just kind of explain about the different kind of pipes that you have in your in your. Pipe. Yeah, so I got a couple examples here. Here we got a two inch line. This is what you'd find out in the street distributed to your service line, which is right here, a half inch line. These half inch lines, what you find mostly on property, are very thin. A shovel will go right through that and cause a damage and gas to escape. That is true. So you really want to be safe for yourself and for also your neighbors too. Correct. And then if I do do damage, I'm responsible, aren't I? Yes, they are very expensive damages. There is a, there is a cost involved with that. So not only is it unsafe, there is a cost that goes along with damage and utilities. And you know, April is a very special month here, isn't it? Yes, April is National Dig Safety Month. It's very important to us here, and uh, we just want to make sure everybody gets the word out about calling 811. Yeah, and you know, it is really that easy, and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything to call before you dig, but after, if you do the damage, you are responsible. So please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the website, and you can get all that information to be safe. Thanks so much, Eric. Thank you. Well, here it is springtime. It's a beautiful day. We're thinking about our gardens and our patios. We're out here with Diana out at Terra Casa. And what are we looking at today? We're looking at concrete fountains and bird baths. And you have an amazing selection out here. We do. We have a great expanded selection. Our uh, concrete bird baths did really well last year because they have a little tiny bubble. The birds love to sit on the edge. They love to take a bath and get a drink and 
there's quite a few different ones to choose from this year. And so with all these, you know, lots of different styles, you know, people coming out, they're looking at what they want to do for their garden and they pick one out. How, you know, do they get to take it home that day? They, do... they can certainly take it home that day. If they'd like us to come and set it up for them, we can do that too. These concrete, it's very, very heavy, but uh, some, of them, some of them are small, but anytime it gets to a fountain, they weigh hundreds, if not thousands of pounds, and we're, uh, we're happy to come set it up for them. And so you, ha you have a service that will do that, do. take it out, and then we you do. give them all the care and yes. what they're supposed to do with yes. all of that. And with such an amazing selection and so many choices to choose from, what, as a homeowner, should they be looking at for? So what I, con I consider the backyard to be a sanctuary of sorts, and everyone has a different um, kind of look that they have going on. Um, I like to watch the birds, so I would probably place a bird bath or a fountain in general somewhere where I could, I could see it. A lot of our glazed pottery we turn into fountains, which the birds love as well. Um, but I would make sure it's something you could hear and you could see from your home at all times. And is that something that, you know, if they purchase it here, you can help the, the homeowner with? with Absolutely, the yes. And it's good to have electrical within about 15 to 20 feet of where we're setting these up because even though you can use an extension cord and we have a really great extension cord that works well outside, um, you do you do need power and you, you want to make sure that uh, your your bubblers and your fountains are going at all times. Right. And so if they, you know, if they see something out here that, you know, maybe I want a little different color, you have a huge selection of of pottery and yes. so you, like you can turn anything into a fountain any pot that we have here we can turn into a fountain we can double stack them we can have uh, single large fountains we can have little tiny ones uh, self-contained that go right on your patio they don't even need a reservoir and you can have big bubbles small bubbles and so it seems like you know you kind of take the guesswork out of we, tr yeah, the, we try out of everything so you know they can pick out what they're looking for exactly. you guys can help you know get it all set up and get them right. all, all all taken care of right. so now if you have a fountain at home that's already in existence you, you'll come out and take care of that too yes right? we do maintenance service as well we can come um, clean them we can troubleshoot if you're having issues with the pumps um, but we have a crew of people that can come out and, and help with, with uh, we don't do ponds necessarily, but anything having to do with one of these fountains, we can certainly work Which on. Which is a pretty great service that, it is. to have. It is. So, yes. you know, with such an amazing selection out here in the, in the variety and the ability to have it set up and delivered, you know, it's definitely a great place to come out. So come on out to Terra Casa and look at your great selection. It is a pleasure being out here this evening. Thank you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Ryan, you need to brush up your look. Ryan, that is better. It's always better when you show off your Garden Time pride. Check out the Garden Time store on our webpage for a great selection of Garden Time gifts and apparel. Choose a hoodie, shirt, hat, bag, or mask for yourself or as a gift for the Garden Time fan in your life. See the complete selection on the Garden Time website. Pick up some Garden Time gear and show your Garden Time pride. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden, just off I-5 near Aurora. Celebrate a spring tradition. Visit the Olda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington.
Well, we have all been enjoying our gardens this spring. And you know, if you need compost, you need mulch, Grimm's Fuel is the place to come. And I'm with Jeff Grimm. And Jeff, we've been here the last couple of years seeing your new facility, and you have a lot of compost and mulch. Welcome back. We do have a lot of compost and mulch, <laughs> and it's all ready to, ready to go. And so why do we want to use that? If we can just kind of remind people why you want to use compost, and then why do you want to top dress? Sure, the, uh, our garden mulch is a compost mulch, made from the stuff that comes into the yard debris recycling center, so the people bring it in with their vehicles, and then we grind it up and compost it for four to six months, and then we screen it out into a fine grind black compost. Yeah, and it's all ready for us to use, and really all those beneficial things, it adds texture, it adds beneficial nutrients, really it's great for our gardens. Yeah, compost is a lot more nutritious and better for your plants and soils than a straight bark dust. Right. Where straight bark dust looks great, but it doesn't have a lot of nutritional value in it, as opposed to the compost. Right. But then if we like that look on top, some people love the look of bark dust on top, and it, it's a totally different look. That's true. The compost has a tendency to be very dark brown to black in color, or the bark dust you can get reddish brown, or the older stuff that's been in the stockpile kind of turns a darker brown in shade. Yeah. That is nice. And then even if you want to do some other kind of, maybe you want to do a pathway, you have gravel too. We have gravel and cedar chips is also good for playgrounds, oh, nice. uh, yeah. pathways, under pl structures, playground structures, stuff like that. Yeah, and I like that you that we can bring our debris too. I know you kind of touched on that, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't fit in our yard debris canisters for the city. So really you can bring it here and, and get rid of it. And then you reuse it. That's true. Yeah, it's a good kind of closing the loop, the recycling loop. So the Tualatin Recycling Center here at the corner of Highway 99W and Seipel Road is open seven days a week for U-Haul. And then people can drop off their yard debris and pick up that a load of compost or bark dust or rock and take it home and finish off their landscape projects. Right, and then, you know, I have a truck, so it's kind of nice, but if we don't have a way to get it home, you can help with that. Yep, we also have the delivery service, so one or two days notice and so we can deliver you compost or bark dust or whatever you need and dump it in your driveway and then you can hire some folks or get your shovel out and start <laughs> spreading it around your, your yard. That's a fairly short notice, one or two days notice. If you want it installed, we can also help you with that. We have blower trucks that come, come out and blow. That service is very popular and it's a little more backed up, so you're going to want to think it more in advance if you want to get that service. Uh, and you know, we have to think forward because I think we were all caught unawares with the, the ice storms and the power outages. So you also have firewood. That's true. We have uh, firewood that comes in from log trucks and also from the storm surge that we had in February. We got quite an influx of wood that we were able to recycle and turn into firewood. So if you need firewood, don't wait till the winter. Don't wait till next ice storm because uh, then you're going to be in trouble. Uh, get it well in advance, like September, October. Get your firewood stacked up then. It's all ready and seasoned and ready for you when you're ready to, when you need it. I think that's really good advice because we want to be prepared again. So really you have so many different needs that can get fulfilled at Grimm's. You can get your compost, you can get your top dressing, and you can get your firewood for next winter. So please go to gardentime.tv and you can click over to the Grimm's website and find out all the information to come out here and have your garden healthy and beautiful too. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks for coming by. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden and these are my favorite new plants for 2021. 
The first is a petunia called Bee's Knees. Full sun, beautiful in hanging baskets or containers. The second is this lovely Calabrocoa right behind me, Coral Sun. Coral on the outside, yellow in the center. It's brand new from Proven Winners. Double Delight Blush Rose. Not only will this begonia work in full sun to full shade, it smells wonderful. This guy, a Plectranthus. Believe it or not, his name is Velvet Elvis. Really cool flowers. I've never seen them like this on a Plectranthus before. Beautiful foliage. This one's going to want full shade. Potato vine. I bet you've never seen a potato vine like this. This one's called Medusa. Brand new from Proven Winners. Leak little fingers. Full shade to full sun. Last but not least, this beautiful iris. Brand new for this year. It's a perennial purple flame, beautiful purple blades, and a wonderful flower. To check this out and more, head on over to our YouTube page for Bowen Farms or come on down to the farm. We'd love to see you soon. Well, we're out at Farmington Gardens. I'm with Jeff from Daisy Rain. Now, Jeff, we talked to you a couple years ago about your great Daisy Rain gardening system. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about your system? Well, we've evolved. Uh, when you first saw us, we invented the sprinkler pot. And the sprinkler pot is a sprinkler built into the flower pot. And this was the product we had, and we still have it. It's a seven gallon pot. It's all, this kit includes everything you need. It's great for a beginner. It's really, it's everything you need and then some. It's simple. And once you get going, you can add to it. That's our line. It's, it's convenient, it's re reliable, and it's expandable. Right. So uh, once you start, yeah, I, it, it gets under your skin and away you go. Right, and, it, and it's a very easy system, but you've evolved now and have a, have a new, the next generation. Yes, and, 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 and this will be, is for people who already are well-versed in their gardening. They have their own containers. Um, and what it is, it is a sprinkler saucer. And uh, if you don't mind, grab the one yeah. from behind there, Ryan. It'd be great. Um, this is the packaging that it comes in. It, it comes, you can't see it, but here's simple instructions. Very IKEA-esque, no words. Um, but it comes with the adjustable spray head, the adapter, everything you need. And uh, I just want to show you the, uh, the profile, the bottom of this guy. This guy is, this is what our patent is. And this is a key way that it'll accept. Now we use this Netafin half inch pipe, but this will accept schedule 40 pipe. Um, any of the Rainbird brand, any of the pipes that are quote half inch, will, will, you can use with this. So you're not limited. Now we chose this uh, 17 millimeter pipe because it's really durable. It's what Big Ag uses. You right. see miles of it in the grapevines in California. It's built to lay in the sun. It's beautiful stuff, but they really don't push it for home users, which right. is which You is know, crazy. the nice, nice thing about this system is it comes up through the middle of the pot. So you're right. not dealing with like the little spaghetti tubing that's on the outside. That can be kind of unsightly. Well, and if you think about this, these, I mean, flower pots have been around, what, Mesopotamia? Yep, right. Plumbing's been around since the Romans, but in all that time, every great mind you have still comes up the outside. Right. And so you have to come over the edge, and when you do that, not only is it temperamental, because you're using that uh, quarter-inch little spaghetti stuff that clogs easy, right. very temperamental, but there's no way to fasten it. And so here, you've got the actual dirt. Here's one with a spray head on, and these are adjustable sprinklers. But the idea is now that you've got dirt, you can not only pull the line tight, but it protects it from the dog right. and from the wind. And I don't know if you've used the little spikes and all the little right. apparatuses they have to hold it in. I have, right. and it, I, I, I'm a third. I right. get a third they're, of them to work. They're not falling over and they're not getting bumped and broken. Right, yeah. right. And this is something, literally, once you set this up, um, and the other thing is, use a timer, but once you set this up and you get it working, which isn't hard at all, you don't touch it. Right. You absolutely don't touch it, and if a dog knocked one over, you set it up, it doesn't affect. Right. All your troubleshooting is done right in the pot, right. not 
on the supply side. Well, so I went out to Farmington Selection out here and grabbed a couple pots out of their great selection. They have beautiful pottery. pots. So let's see how, how easy it is to set this up because we can link a lot of these together. So now that we have our pots are all set up where we want them, that's just as simple as hooking it up to the garden hose. Right? right, you hook up the garden hose. Now you can hook this directly to your faucet, um, but with a garden hose, you can use very little of this. And with a timer, what is nice is it's not charged unless it's on. Right. Okay. There we go, we're running water. So Jeff, this is a great easy system to set up and use, you know, they carry all the parts and pieces out here at Farmington Gardens, but they can also go onto your website, right, and find yes, a retailer near them? it's daisyraingarden.com, but uh, Farmington Gardens, it's beautiful. They've, they've knocked themselves out. They've got a great selection of pots, great plants, and unlike the big box stores, these guys know everything about plants. I encourage you, drive the extra mile, Farmington Gardens, and yes, you can get everything we've got to display Timers, hoses, fittings. If you want the standalone kit, they have that. They have everything, and uh, I encourage you to come on out, because once you do this, you'll never go back to that beach ball of spaghetti right. <laughs> pipe. Right, so you can come on out to you know, Farmington Gardens for the daisy rain, or you can go to your website, or you can go to gardentime.tv for more information. Yes. So Jeff, I appreciate being out here today with you and showing us how simple this system really is. I appreciate you coming out. And again, it's the season. Let's all get garden. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And Ryan, this is my favorite lilac. Is it really your favorite? Well, it is my favorite, but the name is called my favorite. And really, it can be your favorite too at Hulda Klager Lilac Gardens. And Lilac Day starts today through Mother's Day. So come out and enjoy all of the lilacs. So for more information on today's show or the lilac gardens, go to gardentime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Celebrate a spring tradition, visit the Holda Klager Lilac Gardens during the annual Lilac Days. Open daily from 10 to 4. See hundreds of blooming lilacs. Take exit 21 off I-5 in Woodland, Washington. Garden time is on the road again. Join us as we tour Portugal and Spain in the fall of 2021. We start in Lisbon, where we tour the palaces and gardens of royalty. Then we make our way across Spain with visits to the Mesquita and the world-famous Alhambra. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Andalusia before we end up in exciting Madrid. Local transportation, hotels, and 26 of your meals are included. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.